Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day around here. This one's going out to our buddy Trevor Leahy, who has been a fan of EP for years, and now that we're on YouTube, he watches us on his 3DS and his Vita, which is so cool. That's one of the benefits of being on YouTube and Facebook. You can watch us in a bunch of different places. I was checking out the show on the Apple TV yesterday, which was really cool. All right, let's get started with the rundown. Some big news is shaking up the gaming community. According to the U.S. Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, Warner Brothers paid popular YouTuber PewDiePie and others to post positive videos about their 2014 game, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. The FTC says PewDiePie and others were paid thousands of dollars to say they liked the game and then didn't properly disclose that they were being paid to say it. This is a serious violation of ethics, and Warner Brothers has been forced into a legal settlement as a result. Jessica Rich, director of the FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection, points out that consumers have the right to know if reviewers are providing their own opinions or paid sales pitches, which is something we couldn't agree with more. Here at EP, we disclose any and all sponsorship support that we receive, and although we often get free early copies of games, we've never been paid to say that we like them. The sad part is that Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor probably didn't need these kinds of shenanigans because it's actually a great game and we're not even being paid to say that. It's hard to know for sure just how prevalent this sort of unethical behavior is in the gaming community. This whole thing is a good reminder that in gaming and everything else, you should always be on the lookout for potential conflicts of interest and always remember to think for yourself and do your own research. And Warner Brothers is holding back on a little justice of its own. The studio has revealed the upcoming projects that it will be showing off at Comic-Con later this month, and their new Justice League movie won't be one of them. They will be showing off the Wonder Woman solo movie, the villainous Suicide Squad, and the Lego Batman movie, but their Justice League film will be absent. This might sound a little conspicuous given that Batman vs Superman had a huge presence at Comic-Con last year, but keep in mind that Justice League is currently shooting, so the cast and crew are probably too busy to come to San Diego. There are reports of a massive shakeup on Justice League following the poor reception of Batman vs Superman, so hopefully they're not nervous about what fans will think. If I wanted it, you'd be dead already. DC Comics will have a presence at the event as well, and I've been asked to host a panel on the new game in Justice 2, which I can't wait for. Comic-Con takes place July 21st to 24th, and we'll have loads of coverage right here on our channels. Pokemon Go is already a huge hit, and it's gonna get even bigger. Speaking with Game Informer, developer Niantic Labs CEO John Hankey revealed that they plan to release regular updates for the game every other week, which will help keep players interested and always wanting to come back. The first big update that they have planned is to introduce Pokemon trading to the game, giving players the ability to swap their monsters with each other. This is an important feature of previous Pokemon games, not to mention the tabletop cards, so hopefully it arrives soon. Niantic is also looking at ways for players to submit locations for new Pokemon gyms, which will be helpful if the nearest one is on the other side of town. They also hope to bring new customization options to the gyms, although he wouldn't elaborate on exactly how that will work. Pokemon Go was released last week in the US, Australia, and New Zealand, and it's already a super effective hit, becoming the top app on both the iOS and Android stores. It's reportedly raked in more than $14 million from in-game microtransactions, and Nintendo, which owns a stake in Niantic Labs and the Pokemon Company, has seen its shares skyrocket by 25%. Of course, at the time we're filming this, Pokemon Go still isn't available in Canada, at least not officially. That's expected to change soon. You don't have to wait for the next Call of Duty game to satisfy your cravings for militarized violence. The latest batch of DLC for Call of Duty Black Ops 3 lands today as a timed exclusive on the PS4. It's called Descent and gives players four new multiplayer maps, including a reimagined version of the popular raid map from Black Ops 2. There's also the latest chapter in the franchise's ongoing zombie story campaign. This one will thrust players into an alternate version of Stalingrad filled with swarms of mechanized zombies along with massive fire-breathing dragons. Best of all, you'll even be able to ride the dragon, which we assure you is not a euphemism for anything. Two new weapons are also included in the DLC, which should come in handy while you're slaying the undead. This is the third batch of downloadable content for Black Ops 3. The fourth and final batch of DLC for the game should arrive in the coming months, just in time for the next game in the series, Infinite Warfare. That will take players to the distant future this November. And the Commonwealth Wasteland is getting some new content of its own. Bethesda has announced that vault -Tec Workshop, the latest batch of DLC for Fallout 4, will arrive July 26th on all platforms. 
It's basically a Fallout 4 version of the mobile game, Fallout Shelter, giving players the freedom to build and run their own underground vault using the in-game construction tools. A closed beta test begins this week for lucky fans. This won't be the last of Fallout 4. The final batch of DLC is called Nuka World and will give players a post-apocalyptic theme park to explore, complete with a new story campaign. Expect that to drop in August. And before we go, we'd like to let all of our Canadian fans know that Nintendo has just dropped the price of the handheld 2DS in Canada. It will now set you back 110 bucks, making it 20 bucks cheaper than it was before. Keep in mind that the latest Nintendo console, codenamed the NX, is rumored to be including some kind of handheld functionality when it launches early next year, so frugal gamers might want to wait, but still, that's a pretty sweet deal. And that wraps us up for the rundown today. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back again tomorrow. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.